The RPG-7, with its long and storied history, is a weapon that has earned a reputation for its formidable power and versatility. Known as a rocket-propelled grenade launcher, the RPG-7 is celebrated for its ability to engage armored vehicles, tanks, and fortified positions effectively. In this video, we will explore the RPG-7's immense firepower, examining the various aspects that contribute to its strength and the impact it has had on modern warfare. The RPG-7, which stands for Ruchnoi Protivotankovi Granato Moit 7, or Handheld Anti-Tank Grenade Launcher 7, was first developed in the early 1960s by the Soviet Union. The need for such a weapon arose due to the proliferation of armored vehicles and tanks during the Cold War. The Soviet military recognized the importance of having a portable, effective anti-tank weapon that infantry units could deploy. As a result, the RPG-7 was born. The RPG-7 is a portable, reusable, unguided, shoulder-launched anti-tank rocket-propelled grenade launcher. The RPG-7 and its predecessor, the RPG-2, were designed by the Soviet Union and are now manufactured by the Russian company Basalt. The weapon has the Grau Index, or Russian Armed Forces Index, 6G3. The ruggedness, simplicity, low cost, and effectiveness of the RPG-7 have made it the most widely used anti-armor weapon in the world. Currently, around 40 countries use the weapon. It is manufactured in several variants by nine countries. It is popular with irregular and guerrilla forces. Widely produced, the most commonly seen major variations are the RPG-7D model, which can be broken into two parts for easier carrying, and the lighter Chinese Type 69 RPG. The RPG-7 was first delivered to the Soviet Army in 1961 and deployed at the squad level. It replaced the RPG-2, having outperformed the intermediate RPG-4 design during testing. The current model produced by the Russian Federation is the RPG-7V2, capable of firing standard and dual high-explosive anti-tank or heat rounds high-explosive fragmentation and thermobaric warheads with a UP-7V sighting device fitted, used in tandem with the standard 2.7X PG-07 optical sight to allow the use of extended range ammunition. The RPG-7D3 is the equivalent paratrooper model. Both the RPG-7V2 and RPG-7D3 were adopted by the Russian ground forces in 2001. According to the United States Army Training and Doctrine Command, or TRADOC, Bulletin 3U-1977, Soviet RPG-7 anti-tank grenade launcher capabilities and countermeasures, the RPG-7 munition has two sections, a booster section and a warhead and sustainer motor section. These must be assembled into the ready-to-use grenade. The booster consists of a small strip power charge that serves to propel the grenade out of the launcher. The sustainer motor then ignites and propels the grenade for the next few seconds, giving it a top speed of 294 meters per second or 960 feet per second. The TRADOC Bulletin provides anecdotal commentary that the RPG-7 has been fired from within buildings, which agrees with the two-stage design. It is stated that only a 2 meter or 6.6 .6 feet standoff to a rear obstruction is needed for use inside rooms or fortifications. The fins not only provide drag stabilization, but are also designed to impart a slow rotation to the grenade. Due to the configuration of the RPG-7 sustainer warhead section, it responds counterintuitively to crosswinds. The crosswind will tend to exert pressure on the stabilizing fins, causing the projectile to turn into the wind. See weather vane effect. While the rocket motor is still burning, this will cause the flight path to curve into the wind. 
The Tradoc Bulletin explains aiming difficulties for more distant moving targets in crosswinds at some length. The RPG-7 can fire a variety of warheads for anti-armor, heat, PG, Protivotankovaya Granada, or anti-personnel, HE, OG, Oskolochenaya Granada purposes, usually fitting with an impact or PIBD and a 4.5 second fuse. Armor penetration is warhead dependent and ranges from 300 to 600 millimeters or 12 to 24 inches of RHA. One warhead, the PG-7VR, is a tandem charge device used to defeat reactive armor with a single shot. Current production ammunition for the RPG-7V2 consists of four main types. PG-7VL, circa 1977, improved 93 mm 3.7 inch heat warhead, effective against most vehicles and fortified targets. PG-7VR, circa 1988, tandem charge warhead designed to penetrate up to 750 mm or 30 inch rolled homogeneous armor, equivalent of explosive reactive armor and the conventional armor underneath. It has a range of 200 meters or 660 feet. TBG 7V Tannin, circa 1988, 105 millimeter or 4.1 inch thermobaric warhead for anti personnel and urban warfare. OG 7V, circa 1999, 40 millimeter or 1.6 inch fragmentation warhead for anti-personnel warfare, has no sustainer motor. The RPG-7 was first used in 1967 by Egypt during the Six Day War and by the Viet Cong during the Vietnam War, but it did not see widespread usage in Vietnam until the following year. In Mogadishu, Somalia, RPG-7s were used to down two U.S. Army Black Hawk helicopters in 1993. Iraqi insurgents have used the PG-7VR. On August 28, 2003, it achieved a mobility kill against an American M1 Abrams, hitting the left side hull next to the forward section of the engine compartment. During the war in Afghanistan from 2001 to 2021, several M1A2 Abrams were temporarily disabled by RPG-7 hits. The RPG-7 has had a significant impact on modern warfare due to its simplicity, portability, and effectiveness. It has been used in various conflicts worldwide, including in Afghanistan, Iraq, Syria, and Ukraine. Its low cost and ease of use make it a popular choice for insurgent groups and paramilitary forces. The RPG-7's effectiveness against armored vehicles is well documented. Its ability to penetrate tank armor and disable or destroy these vehicles has made it a valuable asset for forces facing mechanized opponents. The weapon's simplicity means it can be manufactured and maintained in regions with limited resources, contributing to its widespread use. However, the RPG-7 is not limited to anti-tank roles. Its versatility makes it effective against infantry, in defensive positions, and fortified structures. The variety of ammunition types allows operators to adapt to different combat scenarios, from urban warfare to open field engagements.